name's Dave, and it's always a pleasure for me to demonstrate or share with you the Shopsmith Mark 7. This machine's very popular. As a matter of fact, we have over a million users across the United States and around the world. This one machine transfers into one of the nicest table saws, a great disc sander, a couple of drills, a wood lathe, routing and shaping too. And with optional attachments, special purpose tools or SPTs, you can add bandsaw work, joiner, belt sander, lots of different scroll saw. So whatever you want to do with a piece of wood, the Shopsmith system will let you do it. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first tool we're going to look at is a table saw. A couple things you want to know about a table saw is the depth of cut. The Shopsmith has a full three and a quarter inches depth of cut, so you can cut through the thicker stock with a single pass. And then ripping capacity. The Mark 7 table saw has a 50 inch ripping capacity, so we can cut to the center of a sheet of plywood. A lot of table saws just limit you to 24, 30 inches, so you're limited to how long a piece of wood you can cut off plywood. The Shopsmith table saw's tables expand out to eight and a half feet, so we have plenty of support surface for those longer pieces of wood. And these extension tables can be used as in-feed and out-feed tables also. We simply stick it in here, Put the telescopic leg on here. Now you've got in-feed support. That table and a second leg, we can go six and a half front to back. Eight and a half across, six and a half front to back. And when you're done with those bigger pieces, store the tables out of the way and the whole shopsmith just takes two by six feet. A little bit about safety, use the guards. Upper and lower start guard are standard equipment. Four piece safety kit. And this piece is worth its weight in gold, the miter gauge safety grip. Pound of pressure through the trigger is actually going to develop five pounds of pressure through the post. So instead of doing the old white knuckle tuck and roll, what we're going to do is we're going to use our table saw with the ultimate safety and have our hands nowhere near that blade when we're making the cut. And I think you'd all agree that this is a simple cross cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little more difficult cut called a compound miter, also known as a confounded miter because the pieces don't fit and then it's the confounded table saw. With the Shopsmith table saw you'll find accuracy second to none, so this just becomes a very easy cut. We've adjusted our miter gauge to 49 degrees and now we're going to tilt the table to 21 just like that. And we're all ready to make the cut, except for the saw blade is resting on the insert. So we're gonna to need to move that blade over a little bit. Simple as moving the blade over. It's attached to the quill feet. So we can move that blade. What you're gonna see throughout the demonstration is that we borrow different features from the different pieces to make each of them easier to use, safer, more accurate. Instead of tapping your rip fence, trying to make an adjustment, bring your ruler to the blade and make any adjustments in your cut at the blade and lock it in. It's a lot faster, a lot quicker, and a lot easier. Dust collection. We all know a clean shop is a happy shop, so we'll plug the dust collection into the lower guard before we make our cut. 3400 on. Confirm. know the toughest part about making that cut is holding the wood. The wood has a tendency to want to follow the grain through the blade, but with the safety grip we eliminate any movement or what they call creep. We can put those pieces back together and with the precision of the table saw you can barely see the piece was even cut. We take those two pieces, turn at one time, and that's how you're going to set up the first corner of your shadow box picture frame. Crown molding, base molding, there's a lot of uses for that cut. The angles come right out of the book, power tool woodworking for everyone, which is included with every Shopsmith machine. That's the table saw.
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change from the table saw to the sander. All we have to do to do that is raise the table, slide the headstock over and drop the table back down. Then we're going to use our 5 30 seconds Allen wrench to remove the blade and the lower guard and we'll come back and replace those pieces with our 12 inch sanding disc. That's all the longer and all the more difficult it is to go from one tool, the saw, to the second tool in the system, the sander. Now that we've got our sander set up, see, if you've got the individual pieces in your garage, sure, you can walk right over to your sander and sand, but that's not really an accurate way to sand. With the Shopsmith system, all of our angles from the table saw transferred to the sander. So we have no additional setup there. All we have to do is sand the edge. Traditionally, we're taught to push that wood carefully into the disc so it won't catch an edge or a corner and round off. With the Shopsmith sander, we're going to bring the disc out to the wood at the exact same angle it was cut, so it's a lot easier to keep that exact same angle when we sand. A little feather sand here, and we've kept the exact same angles from our saw to our sander. We didn't put any gaps or spaces in there. We didn't round off any edges or corners. Matter of fact, now we put our pieces together and the picture frame looks more like the professional woodworkers are putting it together, not little old us in our shop with our shopsmith. That's the 12 inch disc sander. Now we're going to go to the drilling operations. To do that, it's as simple as removing the 12 inch sanding disc and going ahead and putting our drill chuck right on here. Now this tool is called a horizontal boring machine. A tool you don't generally find in a home woodworker shop. It's tools found more often in a, a furniture factory or cabinet shop. See, anybody can drill like this. It's just a lot harder to drill like that because the board wiggles. Or even like that, you don't have a lot of stability to make that hole. See, I think woodworking's a lot like model making. You go to Hobby Lobby and you buy yourself a 1969 GTO convertible and you break all those little pieces off. And when you assemble those pieces, the better the pieces fit, the better your model's going to look. Well, woodworking, again, is no different. You're going to get a set of plans for a little table. It says you need a couple pieces for the tabletop, four for the legs, and four for the rails. And then you have to assemble them with the assembly holes. The more accurately these holes are, are drilled, the better your finished project's going to turn out when you're done. Now, the miter gauge. We're going to borrow the miter gauge. If you want to drill, if that's a six-foot coffee table, we're going to make and you've got a six foot piece of wood it won't fit under the drill press but with the horizontal boring machine we can bring our miter gauge up and drill from any angle 90 degrees or any angle on our protractor into the end or the edge of that piece of wood see we're borrowing different features from the different tools we're going to use our rip fence as a backstop on the horizontal drill and watch this fence, as we tighten it up, it's going to automatically align itself to the table. A second lock here, I'm going to use my pinky to lock it down and look. No movement in the back of that fence. There's nothing more frustrating than getting a table saw where you have to measure from here to here and here to here and put a C-clamp. Have you all ever had to do that on the back of the fence just to keep your table saw good? This fence is going to be a nice addition to your workshop. Now, we want to drill a hole one, one inch deep. Sink the spur of the bit into the edge. Set the depth to one. This is a round ruler, two, three, four inches. Let's go to an inch and an eighth. Now, whether I pull the handle or y'all pull the handle, the drill bit goes an inch and an eighth. That's the accuracy and precision that's built into the Shopsmith system. If you have an accurate way to drill holes in the ends and the edges of the pieces, 
all of a sudden they're going to fit together better. This is going to be the panel you're going to make on the cabinets. This is where the drawer comes in and out and the cabinet door closes and opens. That's the horizontal boring machine. To set up the drill press, it's real easy. All we have to do is take the table, tilt it flat. Let's go ahead and remove our rip fence. Tilt the table flat. Remove these tables here. And the whole system by releasing this end can be set up into the vertical bro that this is the tool dreams are made of a shopsmith look the professionals like this because it's got a two column construction two columns here make sure our headstock and our table always remain in line two columns here means the table always remains perpendicular this is like the xy axis on a milling machine table, not a drill press. The whole table system is attached with protractors. You've got a one degree vernier scale and positive stops. That's 90 on your table saw. That's 90 on your drill press. And if you want to drill a hole in a broom handle or a table leg, it's round. You simply tilt the table. You can go out and buy or build a V-block jig, but with the shopsmith, you tilt your table to 45. To find the center, you bring your drill bit down, roll the table in or out. And when that drill bit hits the bottom of that V, that is the exact center of round. Have you all ever heard the right tool makes the job easy? Socrates said that when he got a shopsmith, they've been around for a long time. We've just been making them in Dayton, Ohio since 1972. Now we've got the table system tilted to 20 degrees and we're gonna drill into the face of the piece of wood. Bring it over, drop it down, lock the table in. You don't wanna drill into your fence, so you're gonna Set that to zero. This replaces the threaded rod and the knurled nuts that you have on your drill press now. 2000 on. Isn't that neat? Furniture factory screw pockets like the professionals use. That's the Shopsmith drill press. Now that we're done taking the drill press apart, let's go ahead and set up our routing and shaping. A simple router chuck or a shaper cutter can fit right on the end of the main unit, just like this. Tighten it down, and now you've got your overhead routing. As a matter of fact, Shopsmith's got a neat insert that has a pin in the center, and this becomes an overhead pin router a rather expensive tool for a workshop. Now we're not going to do any overhead routing or shaping. What we're going to do is under the table, more traditional shaping. So let's go ahead and set that up now. We're going to go ahead and take our rip fence off. That's the first step. Square off our table. The next thing we need to do is take the table saw insert out and we're going to replace that with the shaper insert. While we're doing that, you know, you can get a molder head and a molder insert. You can get a dado set and a dado insert. There's lots of different types of inserts and different operations you can run. We're just going to go ahead and finish setting up the shaper. Lock this in. Now, we're going to go ahead and remove the drill chuck and replace it with our shaper cutter just like that. Let's bring our headstock down this way. Now we're going to tilt the table flat just like we're going back to the drill press.
but instead what we're going to do is turn the whole table system 180 degrees. Drop it back down. Bring everything down this way. Releasing this side of the machine, what was just a minute and a half ago a drill press, now becomes the router shaper system. To finish setting up the shaper, all we've got to do is add our upper guard, which will also act as dust collection. The shaper is going to be used to put a decorative edge on the piece of wood. Let's go ahead and set this up. 10,000 RPM. by the shaper. The reason the Shopsmith shaper works so well is you've got torque, you've got the high speed operations that you really need to do a good job with your shaping. And that's just one of the seven tools built into the Shopsmith system. The next tool we're going to look at is the wood lathe, so let's take a minute to set that up now. The final tool we're going to look at is the wood lathe. So let's go ahead and take a minute to set it up. We're going to drop the whole table system back down. Remove our main table. And we're going to replace our shaper cutter with the drive center for the lathe. See, if you go out and buy an individual lathe, it's going to take up a lot of space in your workshop. With the shopsmith, this is all the space the lathe takes, and when you want to set it up, you just put these three pieces on here. And again, that's all the longer and more difficult it is to set up your shopsmith Mark 7 wood lathe. Table legs, stairway spindles, 34 inch turning capacity for spindles, 16 and a half inches around so for a big bowl or a platter. Now we're going to go ahead and chuck up a piece of wood here, center that in, we'll snug this down and lock that in. We're about ready to go. There it is, wood turning. Now there's lots of different kinds of chisels you can get to do turning. We're just going to look at two. The first one's called a gouge. And with the gouge, we're going to come through here and just knock the corners. Off that block of wood. This is called a spindle. A spindle is just a square block of wood with the corners knocked off. Now to decorate a spindle, we're going to learn two shapes, hills and valleys. The valley, basically the shape of the chisel, we just press it into the piece of wood. We can make our valley a little deeper, a little wider. All we're doing is scraping that wood away. Now in the manuals, it shows you how to do this. That's a scraping cut. By taking this same chisel, the gouge, and turning it up on edge, it becomes a shearing cut. And you can see how much shinier the shearing cut is. And we'll come back from this side, and there's your valley. The next cut we're going to make is a bead or a hill. Before we do that, we're just, excuse me, put a little taper. That's why you're not supposed to talk when you're turning put a little taper on our project and with the skew we're going to come back and just clean that up. Just like power whittling. To make the hill you lay the chisel flat and you roll the handle over. Over. Mark off where and how wide you want your hill to be and roll the chisel 
into that mark. Now I'm not going to try and tell you the first day you do this, you'll do it as well as I can because it takes practice. But that's practice, going out in the shop after dinner and making some sawdust, having some fun. What do you got? Oh, I don't know what that is. It could be the little leg to our footstool or a coffee table or a candle holder. Or You're exactly right, sir. Custom-made salt and pepper shakers. But the whole point of the thing is you've had some fun out in your shop. That's the Shopsmith Wood Lathe. To recap, we started with a table saw, the sander, a couple of drills, the horizontal boring, the routing, the shaping, and finally the wood lathe. Now that's the seven tool system, but as your woodworking capacities expand, as you get better, you can add additional equipment to your shop, an edge joiner, a band saw. All of our optional attachments fit right on the end of the machine here and power off the main unit. There's the strongest 11-inch bandsaw on the market today. The Shopsmith bandsaw has an 11-inch throat and a 6-inch depth of cut, so we can do resawing, cutting thick boards to thin. Bandsaws are also designed to cut curves, so let's do that. We'll hook up our dust collector. The first curve we're going to cut is just a little circle. Now we're going to take a pattern out of the bandsaw chapter in the hardback book, Power Tool Woodworking for Everyone. And the pattern goes something like this. Now the book tells us to take the pattern, trace it on the adjacent side, put the pieces back together and cut it out one more time. So let's do that. That's called a compound cut on a bandsaw where we take the same pattern, trace it twice and cut it out and inside that block of wood is a Queen Anne leg, just like that. That's why you want to add a bandsaw to your workshop. Well that's it folks, the Shopsmith Mark 7. What you just saw was seven of the nicest power tools you're going to be able to put in your home workshop without taking up a whole lot of space. We looked at the table saw, the sander, two drills, wood lathe, routing and shaping, and then on top of that we looked at our band saw. You can get more information by going to shopsmith.com and checking out the Mark 7.